Um, HM um, is uh, a very famous patient who suffered memory loss and had an absolutely transformative effect on our understanding of memory in the brain. Um, he had a very severe case of epilepsy that could not be treated uh, pharmacologically with, with medical treatments, um, uh, drug treatments, and so they performed surgery on him when he was in his late 20s and removed the focus of uh, where the epileptic seizures were taking place. And that location, often in epilepsy, is um, in an area called the hippocampus, which is kind of an, on, on the side of the brain, inside the, uh, in the center of the medial temporal lobe. Um, the good news was uh, that that uh, surgical treatment uh, helped cure the epilepsy. Uh, the unexpected bad news was uh, that HM was no longer able to form new memories. So he didn't really lose uh, memories of uh, from the lifetime, but the doctor would come in every day, and every day um, HM didn't recognize the doctor. And if you try to um, uh, probe uh, HM to remember what he did yesterday and, and tell you about it, he couldn't. He couldn't create uh, new memories after losing uh, this part of the brain. Um, and the um, this was um, scientifically uh, astonishing because most of the theories in neuroscience until that point about localization of memory in the brain, so back to the previous century, um, had indicated from animal research that memories are not in one part of the brain, they're distributed all over. And what happened to HM revealed that no, actually there's one part of the brain that seems to be important, crucially important for one kind of memory, which is kind of that creating a record of what we would typically think of memory, what you had for breakfast yesterday. Very interesting thing has happened with HM, and it's actually uh, um, exciting um, to have the opportunity to talk about HM today because one of the most famous scientists who interrogated HM's memory over a lifetime uh, was Sue Corkin from MIT, and she passed away uh, about a week ago. Um, and HM passed away several years ago, and so anybody who's interested, there's a, there's a lot to read about it, and Sue Corkin did amazing uh, work and kept on interrogating him um, and doing research on his memory. And that's turned out to be really interesting interesting because the first past result led to the consensus that this part of the brain was specialized for what people call declarative memories, the ability to remember what happened yesterday or the day before, and that everything else was intact, like imagination and creativity and morality and so forth. Over the years, um, that turned out to not be true, um, and that there were a lot of other more subtle um, changes in HM's behavior, and since then we have there are many more people um, that have damage to the hippocampus because of uh, hypoxia or uh, encephalitis, various other um, situations. Um, and these people suffer, many of them, from memory loss, uh, but understanding that what that memory is turns out to be um, much more complicated. Uh, and one example that I think is related uh, potentially to morality um, uh, although, I, again, you know, I, I, I don't know, tell me what you think, is that if you just ask people to imagine a scenario, a hypothetical scenario, which it sounds like often happens uh, in sort of assessments of moral judgment, um, that without a hippocampus, people don't imagine that scenario in the same way. They imagine it in a very impoverished way. So if I just asked you, imagine this event is unfolding in two years, tell me about it, and it's your, it's your birthday in two years. Uh, most of us go into a lot of detail and apparently vividly imagine it. People with damage to the hippocampus, which our textbooks tell us is just memory, um, don't imagine that in detail at all. They give a very, very vague kind of sense of what's going to happen.